he fell victim to his own network's media bias. He's convinced, oh, well, I'm not seeing all these stories on CNN of unarmed white kids being shot by cops. It must not be happening. Uh, no, it's actually happening about twice as often as it is for black people. It's just not making national news because it doesn't fit your political narrative. And that is why Chris Cuomo doesn't know that it's happening. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Our Daily Dose of Stupid for today, for right now, Chris Cuomo, the reigning champion, the stupidest person of the year 2020. So Chris Cuomo... You know what? I'm not even going to intro it. I'm just going to let you watch it cold. This happened on his program just a couple of nights ago. Watch. You know what the answer is. You really do. You don't like it. I don't like it. It scares me. Shootings, gun laws, access to weapons. Oh, you, I know when they'll change. Your kids start getting killed. White people's kids start getting killed. Smoking that doobie that's actually legal probably in your state now, but they don't know what it was. And then the kid runs and the pop, 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 pop. Cop was justified. Why'd you run? Oh, he had a baseball game tonight. Huh? The white kid. Oh, big family. That house over there. Those start piling up. What is going on with these police? Oh, what? Maybe we shouldn't even have police. That kind of mania, that kind of madness. That'll be you. That'll be the majority. Because it's your people. See? Now, black people start getting all guns, forming militias, protect themselves. Can't trust deep state. Hoo -hoo. You'll see a wave of change in access and accountability. We saw it in the 60s. That's when it changes. Because that's when it's you. Yes, I think everyone's IQ just dropped a little bit watching that, but... Here, here's my rule of thumb, and it's a very simple one, but it works. If you are not sure if something is racist, all you need do is change the race of the person, or ch change the race in the sentence and see if it sounds racist then. So when he says, white kids, oh, white parents' kids start getting killed, white people's kids start getting killed by cops, then stuff will start changing. Um, what if he said the same thing about black people? I believe Chris Cuomo would not have a job the next day if that had happened. But if you're saying it about white people, it's perfectly acceptable. So, as insulting and ridiculous as what Chris Cuomo just said was, it's rooted in something that he doesn't understand because he doesn't think that way. People do not see themselves as members of tribes, by and large. The woke left does. In fact, they see nothing but tribes. To them, everything comes through the lens of tribes. Whether it's rich versus poor, whether it's black versus white, whether it's Republican versus Democrat, they, they see every aspect of the world as tribe struggle. It's just how they think. But the average person just doesn't see themselves that way. They think of themselves as individuals. They don't think, well, I can't possibly relate to George Floyd because he's a black person. No, I, I think the fact that we saw the massive outcry of people, including conservatives, talking about how wrong De George Floyd's death was, whether or not they agreed with Derek Chauvin's defense team or whatever, or thought that they, they might have had some good points, ultimately, at the end of the day, they said that that shouldn't have happened. Floyd did not act the way that he should have as an officer of the law. The vast majority of the population, with a handful of very rare exceptions, agreed with this that even if they thought it wasn't as bad as some people were making it out to be, that it's still really bad and they would never want a cop like Derek Chauvin handling them or somebody that they knew. And they were able to say that after seeing his reaction to George Floyd. In other words, they did see themselves in George Floyd. Well, how can that happen if they're not black? Because the average person doesn't think of themselves that way. Not every aspect of their life is driven by race. We're all created in God's image. We're all sinful people that are in need of salvation. And because of that, you really just don't see a ton of differences. I mean, th there's some, sure. There's some cultural differences. I think everybody acknowledges that. But at the end of the day, people are just people. 
if let's say exactly what happened here and, and not even exactly what happened, but the perception of what happened happened. Let's say that I had a run in with a police officer and the police officer completely unjustified and provoked just killed me for no reason. Would my dad be really upset at that police officer? Yep. Would my dad be in favor of some kind of localized police reform? Probably. I think he would probably take that on a case by case basis. Do you, th do I think that my dad would go after that cop's conviction? Sure. Would it change his stance on gun control? Nope. Not even in the slightest. Would it make him believe that all cops are evil? No. Would it create a idea in him that all cops everywhere are systematically flawed and untrustworthy? Nope, wouldn't do that either. Again, because it goes back to the core thing that Chris Cuomo was talking about. My father, just like other conservatives, do not see people as collectives. He doesn't assume because a cop here did something really stupid and bad, even something as horrible as murdering somebody, as a problem that is systematic throughout the entirety of the system. He doesn't think of people that way. He doesn't lump them into groups and judge everybody based on a bad experience he had with one of them. That is prejudice. That's the definition of prejudice. You have a bad experience with one person, and so you judge other people based on something that they did not do. And that's exactly what most people in BLM and the left and Antifa do with police officers. They assume that they're all bad because there might be some of them out there that are bad. And in Chauvin's case, yeah, it looks like he was a bad cop. That doesn't mean they're all terrible. That doesn't mean most of them are terrible. It just means that occasionally there are bad cops, just like there are bad people in any other profession. The most insulting thing to me in that entire clip is where he talks about, oh yeah, black people starting to get guns and, and arming up and forming militias. You can't trust the deep state. Oh yeah, then some gun control laws would change. Bullcrap. No, it wouldn't. It simply wouldn't. I have... Sp <laughs> I have personally helped black people pick out guns. I don't have a problem with black people having guns. Any group of people, if they feel as though they are being persecuted, whether that perception is true or not, ought to have guns. Period. End of discussion. If we have a rape culture on campuses, which, I mean, numerically is just false, even though I do believe it's false, it would still be a better thing for women to be armed. In fact, the number one determining factor between a rape not being completed, an attempted rape not being completed, or being completed is whether or not the woman had a gun on her. It's the number one thing. That goes from a success rate of 50% chance of the rape being completed to less than one. It is the number one determining factor. So if we feel that women are being persecuted and victimized, arm the women. If gay people are being victimized, arm the gays. If trans disagree with their lifestyle, but if they feel that they're being persecuted against, arm the trainees. Arm whoever. And the same is true for black people. One of the very first things the NRA did, one of the reasons that the organization was established is to preserve the gun rights of black Americans that were being unfairly persecuted from having firearms by the Klan and Democrats that were in control of Southern states at the time. That was one of the very first things they did as an organization. I want more black people to be armed. I don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, whatever. Doesn't bother me. Arm them all. That's my stance. I know Chris Cuomo, that would blow his mind that I'm in favor of that, but I really am. The Second Amendment does not know any race. It is for everybody, regardless of race. What Chris Cuomo's assertion there is, even though it's, it's you know, his hypothetical is stupid, but it's also not even based on truth because he is assuming there that white people are not being killed by police officers. Now, this is not to say anything to justified or unjustified. I'm not talking about that because, you know, there's a lot of people that are killed by cops every year and the vast majority of them justified killings. Those people should have been killed because they presented a threat to themselves, a threat to the, or, sorry, a threat to others or threats to the officers. And because of that, they did need to be taken out. There is a small minority of unjustified cop killing, killings, but the idea that police officers are not killing white people or white people's kids is simply not true. Just out of a cursory search, these are just some of the cases that I found about this. You can see there. So we have several instances that made news of white kids 
being shot by police officers. In one case, it was a black police officer. Do you know any of those people's names? I'm guessing you probably didn't. Now remember, I do news for a living, and I didn't know any of their names either. One of them was from this area. I could drive to his house in 20 minutes. I had no idea who he was. You know why? Because like I said at the beginning of this, we do not see ourselves as tribalists. When we see a black police officer shooting an unarmed white teenager, we may assert that that's bad or that the police officer did so in error. I really don't know. I haven't seen the details of the case. Might have been a justified killing. I really have no idea. But the point is, I didn't assume that that person was in the wrong because the police officer was black and the kid was white. I also didn't assume that they were wrong because the police officer was armed and the kid was unarmed. Still might have been justified. But at the end of the day, the point is, this didn't become a national news story because people do not see themselves as tribalists most of the time. The reason that it is being driven by the mainstream media and the left is primarily because they think they can use it to get their political desires met. And frankly, they've had some success in doing so. We've seen anecdotal evidence of that happening, but what is it like on the massive scale? Well, let's take a look at this from Statista. So these are from uh, police fatalities from shootings from 2017, 18, 19, 20, and some partial data from 2021. But of course, that year isn't ended yet, so we don't have full data on that. Huh. Seems like there's about twice as many white people that get shot and killed by police every year than black people. Well, that's funny, because if you were listening to Chris Cuomo, you would assume that that never happens. That this is an anomaly. And once that did start happening, then all of a sudden you would start agreeing with all of his kooky liberal policies. Here's the problem with that, though. I've already proven Chris Cuomo's point completely wrong. There's, it's not based in fact whatsoever. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. No thinking person can look at those statistics and go like, you know what, Chris Cuomo's got a good point. Because there's at least twice as many white people killed every year by police officers than black people. I've completely destroyed that argument. However, I'm going to go deeper anyway because I'm a huge nerd. Sorry, it's just the way that it is. You knew what you were getting into when you started watching this show. So let's dig a little deeper. Because I'm just proving Chris Cuomo's argument, but somebody could see this segment and go, yeah, Caleb, that is true, and you're right on that, and yeah, Chris Cuomo's an idiot. I mean, we all knew that. But, just for the sake of argument, let's bring this up. Outside of Chris Cuomo's point, you didn't account for population. Yeah, it's true that twice as many white people get killed as black people. However, white people do make up about 70% of the population, whereas black people only make up about 13%. So if you adjust for population, it seems as though black people are getting killed at a much higher rate than white people. Okay, thank you for being a critical thinker if you did think that when you saw that. Bravo, well done. Because most people just see raw numbers and assume that that's all there is and don't take into account things like population. However, that's an unfair rubric, and I'm going to explain why. We should not be judging based on raw population. We should be judging based on how often they have encounters with the police officers, because that would assume that every race commits crimes at the same rate, and that is simply not true. We know this from crime statistics. So what I did was, and I think that this is going to be really beneficial, I took a look at the crime rates by... FBI statistics from the same years that that Statista graphic looked at, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Now you'll see there, from the year 2017, uh, violent crimes, white versus black, you'll see the raw numbers there, and then you'll see the percentages. White people did commit about 68.9% of the crimes there, but for black Americans, it was 27, so more than double their population. The same thing was true for 2018 and 2019. There's a little variation in the numbers here and there, but by and large, you're seeing something floating around the 27 number when they make up only 13% of the population. And so it is absolutely a fact that black people on average are committing far more crimes. And, and these are specifically violent crimes. These aren't even just like, you know, petty uh, crimes or speeding tickets. No, no. That's specifically looking at violent crimes and property crimes. And so the situations in which police officers might have to use violent force in order to stop somebody. And so we're looking at something that is extremely relevant to the kind of situation that we're talking about. 
Instead of comparing it to raw population figures, I compared the number of fatal police shootings to violent crimes as a percentage, and here are the results of my findings with that. So you can see here, and I have separated it by race, you can see that white fatalities in these three-year spans, 2017 to 2019, there were 1,226 fatalities at the hands of police officers that were white in this three-year span. Their violent crimes were 15.68 million, which accounts for about 69.1%. And that means the rate of being shot by a police officer is approximately 0.0078. Now, one takeaway you should have from this before we even get into the black statistics is Holy cow, even if you commit violent crimes, your chances of being killed by a police officer are practically nothing. Which is a pretty good sign that police are good people that don't want to kill people and are doing their jobs. In the vast, overwhelming majority of cases, that is true. When you've only got a 0.0078% of dying at the hands of a police officer while in the process of committing a violent crime, that means our police are keeping a lot of people alive, even if they are committing crimes. Now let's look at that compared to statistics with blacks. Their fatalities are 667. Their violent crimes, 6.15 million, so they account for about 27.2% of all violent crimes, which makes their rate of being shot 0.0108% which is slightly higher than the rate for whites. That is a difference, for those of you that are keeping up at home, of 0.003%. We are literally talking about a difference that is so minuscule, it doesn't even count for three one-thousandths of a percent. That's how tiny the difference is. When you're talking about rates of crimes committed by black people and white people versus their fatalities in being shot by police officers. Now, to be fair, it is slightly higher if you are black, but it's so infinitesimally small you can't even tell a difference. It's not even a whole percentage difference. It's not a tenth of a percent. It's not a hundredth of a percent. It is three one thousandths of a percent. These are infinitesimally small differences. And what that should tell you is that when it comes to policing, cops are pretty good at keeping it even. And by the way, this is not my first time doing this. For those of you that have been a fan of the show for a really long time, you know that I started about five years ago, and I ran the numbers for the years that we had available back then. I think the most recent one I did was either 2014 or 2015. When I ran the numbers then, the rate was about the same amount of difference, but the difference is whites were actually the ones that were slightly more likely to be killed by police officers. And so we're talking about minuscule differences, virtually nothing. It's so small, it's hard to even observe it in terms of statistics. And so because of that, that's a pretty conclusive case that this whole thing is manufactured. See, here's what actually happened here. Chris Cuomo fell victim to his own ivory tower. He fell victim to his own network's media bias. He's convinced oh, well, I'm not seeing all these stories on CNN of unarmed white kids being shot by cops. It must not be happening. Uh, no, it's actually happening about twice as often as it is for black people. It's just not making national news because it doesn't fit your political narrative. And that is why Chris Cuomo doesn't know that it's happening. He's completely unaware of it. He has his head so far up his ivory tower. So you thought I was going to say something else. He has his head so far up his ivory tower that he doesn't even know that that's taking place, and so he thinks he's making a good point. But if he actually did any digging into the statistics, he'd find out that we're being shot and killed by police officers, whether justified or unjustified, at roughly the same rate that black people are. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me, I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.